Careful. Careful. Count them, George. There should be ten dozen. Yes, ma'am, they're all here. For God's sake, look inside and count. Ever heard of pilfering? Up. Down. <laughs> there we go. Unmistakable, aren't they? Indeed they are. Josette? Marie? I'm Josette, madame. Marie. Finn. Finn. Bonjour, Finn. Bonjour. Goodness. What a surprise. It was a long train ride. <laughs> We had some very lively, lively conversations. conversations. He's a real gentleman. You know Josette and Marie? We have come to work for Madame. Come on. Bye. Bye. Come and see us sometime. Watch me dump 60 bushels in the bin, Ferris, not 50. Can't you count? I go by the scales, and the scale says 50 bushels, and 50 bushels I'm paying you for. You are cheating us day in and day out. I'm sick of it. Number two, I brought in number one wheat, Ferris, and you know it. Oh, so you're a grading expert now, are you? That is number one. We all got number one grade this year. Kiss up. Bastard! You tell Hawk, we are not putting up with this anymore. Oh, well, you can take your shot and ring somewhere else then. And where might that be? It's the same thievery going on every elevator up and down the line. Next! Come on! Price is up again in Winnipeg. Dollar forty-five bushel for number one. Time to move some of it out. Half a million, no more. 
Empty the elevators in the eastern sector. The yield's high, we'll need the room. <laughs> ah, you found it! <laughs> That's the future, Johnny boy. Telephone. <laughs> know how it works? No. No, I think no. you talk no. into this part and listen with this. Mr. Hawk! Mr. Hawk! <laughs> Just a minute, Ferris. <laughs> Get on! Can we go see Dainty? Yes, at this time. Now, what is it, Ferris? It's awful tense out there. They're complaining about the weight, pissed off about the grading, and they nearly beat me up. Huh. Well, you look all right to me. Wait three, four days. Lower the price again. <laughs> Come on, let's go. Be up, Dad. Bastard. So, Finn, how long will we have the pleasure? Uh, a week at the outside, maybe less. Mr. Esky. Why are you working here? You've been gone a long time, my friend. There was a fire. My nephew was killed. Terrible, terrible. I'm sorry. Life, life, what can you do? Miss Carmichael was good enough to give an old man a job. So she manages the hotel, then? You're staying here? What effort possesses you to stoop so low? You work for my father. I work for nobody. She owns the hotel, Finn. Oh, he loves me. What? He don't come to me no more. Not for months and months. Oh, hush, Kathleen, and nothing. Please. Well, maybe you could talk to him. Set things right. I expect he's just tired, dear. Tired, my foot? He's having a go at some little bit of quim, that's what. I can smell the stink of her on his linen when I do the wash. Mom! Mom! He's back! is all. Oh, you look so wonderful. Why have you come? It's been seven years, Mom. You won't travel anymore? You forbid me to come back. The letter said nothing about this. I'm sorry. Forgive me, darling. Kill the fatted calf. Hello, Father. What brings you here? Planning to shepherd Reverend Scott's flock now that he has dementia? No. You were right about one thing. The ministry wasn't my calling after all. Ah. Just passing through then, I presume. Yes. Finn, help me out, please. Dad, let's go. Oh, Johnny. Ah. That's your brother, Finley. I didn't know I had a brother. Neither did I. Well, let's go, son. The last of it, Clifford? Maybe one more load. Tell Ferris I've already graded it number one. Okay. No 
don't know, blow through your mouth. Like this. Watch, I'll show you. See? When you whistle, she stops. Just like that. you hog. You've been promising me title to this place for three years. I've got to think of the future. Mary. Don't worry, Agnes. You'll get your title. One bad year is all it takes, and we've had three in a row. Drought, hail. Damn grasshoppers back in 96. Gotta borrow just to eat. But this year is a bumper crop. All number one. Till we take it to the elevator. This goddamn shysters downgrade it every time. And short wait us every time, too. If they're cheating us, we can prove it. No one cares. You can prove it? Hey. You're a Hawks boy, ain't you? You're a Hawks boy? I'm Finley Hawk, yes. Well, what the hell are you doing nosing around here? I'd like to know what he's up to. And I'd like to know why you're so interested. Johnny rides like a half breeder. <laughs> he loves that pony. Loves her. Ah! Oh, my God. Don't touch him. Dad, I can whistle. I think he's the smartest horse in the world. You can have her. Thank you. Come on, boy. <laughs> Come and sit on your pony. <laughs> She's yours now. Say it. I had to. I mean, I'm tired of waiting. But she's mine. Listen. I've been laying down with Hawk now for three years, huh? He promised me this place. Still, he holds on to the title. I do what I have to do. And soon enough, my girl, you'll know what I'm talking about. There's four reasons a woman lays down with a man. The first is pleasure. Because you want to so bad you could choke. She's the best reason, but it doesn't come around much. The second, she's out of kindness. The man 
He wants you so bad he could choke. And you like him, okay, so why not, huh? The third is because you got no choice. Maybe some man, he just takes you. Maybe you have a husband and it's your job. Fourth is when you want something so bad, you lay down with the man who can give it to you. Mom. Exemplary grass, my dear. And you, an exemplary hostess, as usual. Thank you. It's lovely to have you back, Mr. Burlingham. One of our favorite guests. One of? <laughs> have you uh, thought any more about my little proposition? You make the same little proposition every visit. To be honest, I never think about it. Might as well give up on it, Bob. The day she sells you this place will be the day that hell freezes over. Hey, Finn! Mr. Rusky. Don't worry about him. Okay. Bit of fresh air will do him good. <laughs> we serve everyone here. We make no distinctions. Have a drink. Thank you. You're still causing trouble. You looking for someone? Uh, no, I just... Uh... Just came for a drink. Excuse me, sir. I'm Finley Hawk, John Hawk's son. Mind if I join you for a drink? Mr. Hawk's boy, sit down, sir. Sit Thank you. Down. Drink whiskey. Go well with a beer. Cheers. Schlanter. Uh, so I understand you work for my father. I do. Good man. Yeah, he is. How long have you been working for him? Since the beginning. Yes, sir. There's nothing I don't know about the green hand. Hello. Hello, operator. I'd like to make a call to uh, Montreal. Farmers cheated. An exclusive report by correspondent Finn Hawk. <laughs> Reprinted from the Montreal banner. For years, Western farmers have been complaining of cheating by grain elevator operators across the West. This is why deputations of farmers have been petitioning the government for redress. But nothing's happened. In a town of promise, we have uncovered exactly how this cheating exactly is carried out. Exactly how this cheating is, is carried out. The weight scale is rigged so that the grain delivered by the farmers weighs substantially less than it actually is. For example, a typical wagon load with 2,000 pounds of grain would only register as 1,700 pounds on the doctored scale. When multiplied by hundreds of loads of grain, the illicit profits for the owner of the elevator, Hawk Enterprises, runs in the tens of thousands of dollars. Bastards. Mm. Furthermore, we have discovered collusion between the government weight inspectors and the elevator operators. What? what? Days before an inspector is to arrive, the elevator operator is forewarned and the scales adjusted accordingly. The cheating, however, is not restricted to false weights. This correspondent has seen wheat that is clearly number one arbitrarily downgraded at the sole discretion of the elevator operator, once again costing the farmers thousands of dollars. Because of situations like this, the government is under tremendous pressure to set up a commission to investigate these complaints. These complaints. Finally, somebody's telling the truth, and it's Finn Hawk. <laughs> Bloody <laughs> <tough>. <laughs> At last, a voice from the people. The pen is mightier than the sword. To Finn. To Finn. To Finn. To Finn. To Finn. It's early days yet, Mr. Askew. It's Jacob, comrade. Mr. Askew, 
Only for the capitalists. <laughs> Jacob, it is. So what do we do now? You're a newspaper man, Thin. Maybe you could keep up the pressure. I'll do that if I can, but I read it at the behest of my editor. It all depends but on... But there are so many stories to tell, and the newspapers don't begin to tell our side. Right. You could start up a proper paper, here in Promise. Tell the truth and shame the devil. I'm sorry, the answer is no. You are leaving us, then. I can't stay, I don't belong here. You should stay, Finn. You might as well save your breath, Dad. Finley Hawk likes to stir things up and then run off. <laughs> but you don't understand, sir. It's included in the price. Free, as it were. But I don't want a bath. No bath, no girl. Yeah, okay. Josette, could you give this gentleman a bath, please? Never heard nothing like it before, though. Bonsoir. Can I help you? Yeah, I hope so. I believe the gentleman wants to spend some time with one of our lovely girls, Margaret. Yes. Yes, that's right. I want a whore. How much for you? I'm not for sale. Come on. You're definitely a whore. What do you mean you're not for sale? You're the perfect model as far as I'm concerned. Get out of here. Come on, Kaylee. You owe me. You owe me. Come on. One night for old time's sake. I owe you? You son of a bitch. You left me. Of course I left you. Why would I stay with my father's whore? How dare you even think such a thing? Get him out of here. Yes, ma'am. Come on. There's no photograph of Johnny. Isn't there? You want me to spell it out for you, is that it? Hawk is his father. And Kathleen is his mother. Both Johnny and the world at large think that I am his mother. Although I doubt that anyone is actually fooled. Did you lie to me about Kaylee and Dad? His parting words to me, if you remember, were that he, he poked Kaylee like a dog since the day she arrived in this house. Do you remember? Yes. And you backed him up. You said that that was the truth. Was it? No. You wouldn't have gone because of her. I had no choice. And I'd do it again. I would. Oh, but I was right, don't you see? Finn, she may not have been his mistress then. But how do you think she got that hotel? God damn you, Mum. Why do you stay? I stay because he wants me to leave. I stay because he doesn't want me here. He keeps a mistress under the same roof. He passes off his bastard son as your own. He very nearly beat me to death right in front of you. Have you no shame? No, I'm shameless. Shameless. Shameless doesn't begin to cover it. Here 
you go, my darling. A lovely fry. I don't want it. Can I take some sugar lumps? I'll give you a lump of sugar for every bite you eat. How's that? Okay. Now you eat up. Where's my sugar? Where's my sugar? You have another piece of bacon now. Still here? I thought you'd be on your way back to civilization by now. Where's my sugar? You realize that yesterday's news is today's fish wrap. <laughs> I'm not running anywhere. Look at me. I'm staying. And I'm gonna bring you down, you miserable bastard. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right, John. It's all right. He's all bark, no bite. <laughs> not a proper hawk at all. Not like you and me. No, sir. Not like you and me. See you around, Father. Watch yourself, Nell. So, did you lend Finn the capital to uh, buy out Davidson? Not exactly. What do you mean, not exactly? He was able to establish a line of credit. He doesn't have anything against which to establish a line of credit, Arnold. Somebody must be backing him. So who is it? Who's backing him? That's privileged information, I'm afraid. Where is she? Kathleen! You. You're the one who set that bastard up so he could publicly humiliate me. It's not Finn who's the bastard. You are my wife! In what sense? God damn you to hell! How dare you! What are you going to do, John? Set me on fire? Kathleen! Oh, you're leaving. You are finally leaving. I would never dream of doing anything that would please you so much. These will do, I think. Yes, ma'am. No, Hilda and Lucy are leaving. I found a school that will take them on, teach them a few social niceties, very near my father. You dried up, miserable old hag. I can't stand to be under the same roof with you. It makes me sick just to look at you. I have an idea. John, why don't you move out to the river ranch? Weekly, get your weekly, one cent, weekly promise. Haley, 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 please, would you just give me a minute? I'm sorry I thought you were my father's mistress. God damn it, Kaylee! Don't Kaylee me. Sorry? So what? I loved you, damn it, and you abandoned me. How could you break my heart like that when I loved you so? My father told me that he had slept with you. My mother said that it was true. You believed your mother? That scheming hypocrite? 
Yes. I spent seven years hating you. And seven years hating myself for loving you anyway. You're staying? Yes, I'm staying. That's a start? I've missed you. Everything. Look at you. Mistress of the Empire Hotel, no less. How did you get all this? How did you get here? How did you get the hotel? I can't tell you that. It's just I know. When I left, my father in the hotel. Now I come back and you own the hotel. I never belonged to Hawk. So how'd you get the hotel? I don't want to talk about it. Look, Anna... It's got nothing to do with you. Well, if it's got nothing to do with me, then why won't you just say? I want you to leave now. Kaylee. Go. Have you not read this? Fuck. 
God's sake. What's the circulation here? 500? The slanderous articles are being picked up by papers all across the country. Calgary, Toronto, Montreal, Vancouver, Kingston. Oh, farmers are organizing in Manitoba. There's talk of them going political, forming their own party. Now think of it, Samuel. 90% of the voters are farmers. Who are they going to vote for if they get their own goddamn party? This is happening in your own backyard. Do something. Headache for a few days, and that blow to the skull, four broken ribs, badly buggered kneecap. He shouldn't be moved. Thank you. He can't stay here. You know, compassion. Whatever dreadful thing he's done, you haven't got it in your heart to forgive him now when he's like this. He does love you, you know. Much going on in our place, so uh, uh, this time of year. So uh, figured we do a house cleaning and watch back for a while. It's gonna be fine, son. We'll have this place up and running again in no time. No, we won't. All the hard work in the world won't get that press back into shape. Then we'll send for another. There's no point, is there? It can take months to get another press here from Chicago, never mind the cost. You don't understand, son. This is our paper, too. Well, forget it! Look, Finn, we all know how you feel. But... What is it? The government set up a commission. 
kind of promise. Get this. Thank you. This commission is now in session. Mr. Andrew Carmichael. I've been out here in the Assiniboia district since 83 working 18 hours a day or more, and all I got to show for my work is my original home quarter. My wife is uh, dead, and all my kids are gone. I, I lost my uh, preemption to the bank. Uh, well, if you want accuracy here, I'd have to say uh, I lost it to Hawk, and he, he's made my life a misery ever since. Every winter, I uh, go up and work in the lumber camps uh, to make enough money to buy seed for the spring, uh, pay the interest on the mortgage, put food on the table. Uh, I'm not talking about luxuries like shoes. I'm talking about living so low to the ground that you got to taste the dirt in your mouth your whole life. That's all. Hawk owns every elevator up and down the line. He and the railway got us between a rock and a hard place. And it just ain't right. Yes, not right. Yes, sir. I do know what I'm talking about. Me and my dad built our own way scale according to government specifications. And every time we take a load through Hawk's damn elevator, we come up two to three hundred bushels short. Mr. Ferris, you as the elevator manager here in Promise stand accused of at least a dozen infractions of the law. Our weights and measures are checked regularly by federal inspectors. And I have here all of the verification certificates given by the inspectors since the day we opened for business. The last one dated just four days ago. I know that farming is not an easy life. And it's understandable that the men speaking here today would like to find someone to blame for their hardship, but Hawk Enterprises is a legitimate business. And the charges direct and imply that we are somehow in cahoots with the railway to deny the farmer what is rightfully his are outrageous. And I, for one, am delighted that the commission has come to town so that this absurd theory of collusion can finally be put to rest. Thank you, Mr. Hawk. I'd like to speak. My name's Finley Hawk. You're not on the list, Mr. Hawk. Are you a farmer? No, sir, I'm a newspaperman. As a newspaperman, sir, your duty is to report on the proceedings, not to partake. Yes, sir, I understand. But. In the service of truth, I'm compelled to respond to the bald-faced lie of the previous speaker, Mr. John Hawk. A serious accusation, Mr. Uh, Hawk. Are you related? Yes, he's my father. <laughs> I have in my possession irrefutable proof that collusion does exist between the railroad and the grain elevators. I have here a letter of understanding signed by John Hawk and his long-term silent partner in Hawk Enterprises. That silent partner being none other than the railroad by way of vice president of the Western region, Mr. Robert Burlingham. Yeah, what more do you need? The government can no longer ignore the claims of these farmers. How the hell did he get his hands on that? I don't know. This is going to take some repair. There'll be a 15 minute recess. Nice job, Finn. 
politics you got my <laughs> <laughs> You are my son, after all. What's the matter with you? Come on, something got lost for the people to celebrate. I am celebrating. What you celebrating, little sweetheart? The bubonic plague? The Inquisition? I'm celebrating what I do best. Dancing with the devil. You want to know how I got the hotel? Everyone knows about you and Hawk. You do something. It belongs to you. Don't be ashamed because of what other people think. On the other hand, if you feel shame, then repent. Atone. You understand? Nobody else can fix it for you. Oh. That's so tough. I love you. You know that? You're like family to me. What's the matter with you? Why are you saying this? You something about my wickedness. Leon was murdered. Hawk hired McCann to set your place on fire because because Leon was stepping his wife. But Jacob, it was, it was me who told Hawk they were lovers. I was never Hawk's mistress. I blackmailed him about Leon. I could have gone to the police with what I knew, but I didn't. I blackmailed him so I could get the hotel. So as not to be beholden ever again. Dear God, you are wicked. City boy, huh? Hey, Finn, 
Always good to get some hands-on experience, huh? <laughs> hey, who's that? Looks like Jacob. through on the wire. The commission came down in our favor. The government's already passed a law. What? You can sell direct to the dealers and the railway must pick up your grain. Believe it. We don't have to sell the hawk anymore. <coughs> Question is, what do we do now? Maybe we should just build our own platform. It'll take more than a day or two. Platform's easy. Then what do we do? Do what Hawk does. Go to Winnipeg and find a sales agent who'll buy your grain direct. And for a hell of a lot more than you're getting now. Come on there, Hanson. They're playing our song. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever marry, Jacob? Yes. Martha. They got so beautiful. That. A long time now. Everybody. Leon. He was a son to me. I'm sorry. When you love somebody, you love them no matter what. Anyway, yes? Yes. Yes, that's right. You love Kaylee? What you do, you stupid lout? How did she get the hotel? Thank you. 
old lunatic. Drunk as a lord. Come on, I'll take you to bed. Bed? Sure. I love you, Mark. Oh, you love me, do you? Come on. Mark, I love you. Well, we'll see how you feel tomorrow. Come on. I love you. Well, I am still single. <laughs> I do love you, Mark. I want to talk with you. Jacob told me how you got the hotel. I love you. I understand, but I only want to be with you. Somebody else for that. Somebody good. Like you. I'm not good on privilege. Remember? <laughs> what? What do you need me to say? That I forgive you? I do. It's an amazing city. Well, never mind about the city, Dad. What did you find out? Half a dozen grain dealers bidding on what we've got. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go. Let's get this thing built. Yeah! Yeah! Nobody bringing in their grain. Nobody. They're all taking it to their own damn platform. God. You can't take a crap anymore without some government clerk checking the consistency and charging you a bloody tariff, and I'm sick of it. The whole country's falling apart. Well, <laughs> it's time to show our farmer friends how the world really works. It's not slowing down.
you to pick up our grain it sits up there much longer it's going to rot oh dear dear that is a problem it's your obligation to pick that grain up it's the law but the cars are full they are not full how many witnesses do you need to hear say so they're not full when they pass your buxy little platform but they will be full by the time they cross the border into manitoba now you listen to me you son of a bitch We've been sitting out on the tracks for four days now, waiting to load our grain. Either you stop those goddamn trains or... Or what? Or we'll see you in court. Fine. We're not breaking the law here. Once we have serviced our regular customers, we'd be happy to pick up your grain. It'll be rotten by then, and you know it. It's not my problem. My grain now or I'll lose the farm. I can't afford to wait. Nobody can afford to wait. If we don't stick together on this, nothing will change. We'll always be at the mercy of men like Hawk. Just hold Maybe out I'll... a little longer, please. Here they come. Raise the price to a dollar. You don't need to hawk. They'll be falling along soon enough. Just do it. What's the matter, Hawk? You are a beautiful woman, Agnes. And I am a man of my word.
What's this, Mom? The deed to our ranch. Our ranch? <laughs> so you don't have to lay with him no more. And he doesn't ever have to come here ever again. Next round's on me. Can you believe it? Hawk raised the price. Give me a dollar a bushel. God help us, man, don't you see? It's all a ploy to weaken our will. Once we've no more fighting, let's he'll lower the price to whatever he wants. Go on. We don't want your Judas beer. What the hell are we supposed to do? The green's already started to rot. There's not... One of us can afford to wait. We can't afford not to. We gotta make a stand here. Act like men for a change. Or I tell you, my friend, the shame of it'll do us all in, like a slow poison. We could build our own elevator. Protect the grain and wait the bastards out. I want you to go away from here. And don't come back. <laughs> Agnes? <laughs> Get out of my house. Get off my land. Me, I'd rather lay down with a snake. Get out of here. Don't think this is the end of it. Don't think anything at all. Hey, Mr. Hawk, sir, I finished mucking up the horse straight for you. Any always Piss off, please. Anything you need doing, just... Piss off! Go on! Go on! Go! What are you doing? Let her go! Dad, no! She's got to go back where she came from. No! I'll buy you any no! goddamn horse in the world! You're not stepping out with the squaw no more then, Mr. Hawk. I wish I'd never met the bitch. I wish the hell she was dead. No, no, you stop no, it! Stop no, it now! Stop it! No, no, What's your name? No. John Hawk the Second. Yes. Yes. Now you stop crying right now. Don't weaken. Be a man. If you weaken, they'll get you. 
Till got you! on is the goddamn trains are pulling into Winnipeg half empty. That's what's going on. Will you relax? Are you listening to me at all, Hawk? I've got a business to run. The farmers are refusing to use your elevators all up and down the line. Either we pick up their grain at your elevators, or we pick it up from the farmers direct. You decide. Whippy, buy up every goddamn note those farmers have. They got 48 hours to pay their debt, not a minute more. Understand? I don't know that you've got the cash to buy up every note. Just do it. Glanville. I want you to call on every damn farmer's account. No exceptions. Payable in full by noon tomorrow. Look, uh, none of them sold the harvest yet. They Do won't it. Be able to pay Do it. They're... I'll shut you down so fast you won't know which end is up. We can't hold on. Not now. Hawks bought up every debt we owe. None of us can fight that. You know I can't. Andrew's right. We'll lose everything we have. Maybe next year. We won. That bastard won. Which one do you want? The Irish or the French? Of course, you keep drinking like that. You'll be of no use to either one. Or they to you. You are something else. Your wickedness warms my heart. What heart? <laughs> you are beautiful. For yourself. Get off your Chrysly high horse, girl. 
How did you get here? Huh? How'd you get all this? Come on, Alec. You're drunk. It's just a question of time. So exciting, my dear, to receive your invitation to breakfast. A dream come true. Well, I think you'll agree, sir, that we have something to celebrate. Does your little proposition still stand? <laughs> Hell froze over after all. Come, Johnny. Here they come.
What's going on? Turn your wagons around. And take them home. We've got a buyer. Cash in hand. Who, her? Yeah. Market price, 90 cents a bushel. Market price, 90 cents a bushel! <laughs> Where'd you get the money? You sold the hotel to the railway. <laughs> <laughs> Don't think I'm doing you any favors. I'm a businesswoman. Now, how long is it going to take to finish this elevator you started? A week. A week? I don't know, my friend. I'm in the mood to buy now, but... A girl? Four days. Four days. Ugh, I'm so proud of you. Are you all mad? I'm offering a dollar a bushel! You don't know anything about grain handling. About business. I'm the one who built this land! I am the one who saw a future here! You're gonna give yourselves over to a woman, a goddamn woman? A woman who runs a whorehouse. It's over, father. No. It's not over, boy. It's not over until I bring you to your knees. you wanted, just like you said. You feel ill, don't you, James? You're not yourself, boyo. I've always been a friend of you, haven't I? Times like this, a man needs a friend to take care of him. Yes, sir. You're right, sir. A friend in need is a friend indeed. <laughs> Let the boy go, James. I'll take care of you. Daddy! Please. Let the boy go.